obviously you realize it being live streamed is a couple of well so be live streaming. Yeah, no, no, I know that. We never used to. We never used to live stream. I don't know. No, it's still be live stream. Mm -hmm. it's, still just, it's okay. The point is that if there's an expectation that you wouldn't need to attend because you could hear it on the live stream and if there is an issue. Yeah. So they're just fighting, you're just checking. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Sorry about that. You have two speakers. That's Tyson. Dave's first one. You've got three minutes, Dave. Would you like a 30 second warning? Okay. Thank you very much. Chairman, Shropshire Plainfields Association believe the amended proposal of four members today is clearly flawed, unfair, and contrary to MPPF paragraph 99. Improving an existing bowling green at Greenfields Bowling Club should not be used as mitigation for the loss of the existing green at Albert Road. Where previously there were two greens, now there will be one. So there is a net loss of one green. SPFA believe it is unfair that the community of Sundorn will, where previously Remans had over 500 members, will be losing a bowling green. And it is unfair that the community of Greenfields will be required to share their limited open space with their neighbour. In September 2021, this committee agreed that a new bowling green of improved quality would be provided at the Sundorn Sports Village by 2023 for a minimum sum of £150,000 payable by the developer. One year later, with rapid inflation, soaring costs, a reduced sum of £82,440 is being proposed, payable over a three-year period towards trying to create an equivalent high-quality surface at Greenfields to replace the one that has already been destroyed at the Albert Road site. It is SPFA's view that the customer, that is Reeland's members and Greenfields Bowling Club, are being shortchanged by £67,560 on the original agreement. A sum of money that will be needed to ensure a 10-year maintenance programme is paid for in advance in accordance with condition 5 of the original agreement. And a sum of money that would help meet the spiralling costs that are likely to be incurred in getting the service of equivalent high quality to the one that has been destroyed. SPFA have great concerns for the long-term future viability and identity of the Remans Club, as this new proposal makes no mention that would provide security of tenure for the Remans Club members at their new proposed home, wherever that may or may not be. It is also noted that in paragraph 7 of the Office's 106 Heads of Terms report, doubt has been cast over the likelihood of refurbishing the bowling green at Greenfields, stating that if this were to be the case, then the money should be distributed to bowling clubs across the urban de development boundary of Shrewsbury. We would recommend this paragraph 7 be rewritten to limit the distribution to one of three existing clubs in the north of Shrewsbury, <coughs> being offered in the first instance to Bagley Bowls and Social Club, who are currently in great need of refurbishment and investment, or if not them, Castlefields Bowls Club or St Michael Street Bowls Club, given their relative close proximity to Sunderland. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, Jim. Right, second speaker, Paul H. Stewart on the stage. Good afternoon, Stuart. Would you like a 30 second warning? Um, you're fine, Jim. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak um, today uh, in this context. Well Sorry, I should know better. Um, <laughs> In this context, uh, speaking on behalf of Bromford, who are um, Hagen Association and developer of this site. Um, first thing I'd like to say, if I may, uh, councillors, is that there is much regret about the fact that the Sunderland wasn't able to be delivered. Um, a lot of hard work went into actually that uh, being provided. Uh, and I just um, gently remind that there was actually a planning commission in place. So there was a planning commission in place to, to build that new bowling screen. It was certainly not uh, Bromford's decision whatsoever for that to be kind of the club to be pulled. Um, you'll see from your report that um, regretfully that decision was taken by uh, the trust, the leisure trust, who are, I think, appointed on behalf of Shropshire Council, who clearly wanted to look at the overall master plan for that site, and we, we fully respect that. I think at that juncture it would have been easy for you to give up on this and think, right, where do we go from here? But there's been a tremendous amount of hard work from all parties here, including the existing club that bowled from Elver Road, to find a solution. 
and to accept the position we were in. And, and, and how we've arrived at this point is that um, the, the figure, the, the 85,000 that is referenced, um, that figure was uh, dictated to you by Alan Lewis. Uh, Alan Lewis was an entirely independent um, contractor appointed by neither Shropshire Council or um, uh, Bromford in this context to do an assessment of the green, to assess exactly what was required and to place a figure against that to improve that figure. So we, we purely, Bromford, just said, <coughs> okay, that's fine. I understand the difference from what we were, where we were previously to where we are now. Um, I think the, the, the context of this, and to put it into context, this is about delivering affordable housing. So I understand the focus on, um, on the bowling green, but if this scheme were to be approved, it wouldn't deliver 12 affordable units, much needed affordable units. And importantly, as you see from paragraph 2.3 of the report, uh, a my place scheme uh, over Shropshire adult services being trying to find a my place scheme for a considerable number of time will deliver 14 assisted units of accommodation for Shrewsbury. All parties are happy with the arrangement. The club um, accepted the position. Um, they found uh, some new premises at Greenfield uh, and they've got a substantial sum of money in which to improve the facilities uh, on site. It's a matter that I hear what Mr Kilby said and it's clearly a matter for Shropshire Council as to how that money is distributed if it's not distributed direct to Greenfield. And we would certainly have no issue with that um, whatsoever for, for obvious reasons. So um, I don't think we've got anything uh, else to our chairman. Um, just respectfully request that the permission is uh, allowed uh, and we can get on and build some affordable housing for Shropshire and improve the facilities of the club. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I have no other speakers on that. OK, so Jane, would you like to come back on any of those points? Uh, no, I think I'll wait to answer any, any questions. OK, no at all. Right, I'm to the floor. Mark? Yeah, um, I, I've thought about this a bit and um, apparently Greenfields um, weren't using the, you know, the, the other, they've got two bowling grades and they weren't using the other one that much so, and, and apparently the lads from and the girls from Albert Road are happy to move there. The thing I wasn't very happy on the original one was that at Sundown there wasn't as much community. I think bowling is not just about the ball, it's like any other sport, it's about community and there is a club at Greenfields which will obviously benefit from having more members coming from Albert Road. Um, I, I think the, the the fact that we're going to get more social housing as, as Bromfield are very good at doing and this, you know, we need to get this moving on fairly sharply so I'm happy to go with the officer's recommendation and, and uh, move this. Thank you, Mark. Let's Um, I think Mark said a, a portion of what I was going to say, so I'm not going to um, re-say it. Obviously, it, um, it's more than just about bowling clubs, especially now the Greens um, disappear. I'm not unsympathetic, though, to what David Kilby said about the monies, and I'm looking at officers to see if it would be possible to condition it to bowling clubs, the three that were mentioned within the locale. As it is a northern bowling club rather than putting a smaller amount of money over the whole of Shrewsbury and generating a small amount of money per, per one, whether it would be more sensible to keep it in the immediate locale to the to the bowling club that's disappeared. And if if um, if that's possible, then I'm gonna be happy to second. Can I just can I stand Thank to that point? The, the, heads, yes, yeah, the heads and toes have been amended in the additional letter schedule since receiving the comments from the Shropshire Playfields Association and has been reworded that it, uh, if it can't be for whatever reason used at Greenfields, the provision or refurbishment of bowling facilities with the urban development boundary to the north to the north of Shrewsbury. So it restricts it to any uh, refurbishment of any existing bowling facility to the north of Shrewsbury rather than the whole of, of um, Shrewsbury or the provision of, of bowling facilities. So, um, if members wanted to be more specific and add specific names of bowling clubs, you could make that decision. But at the minute, I've amended it to cover just the north of Shrewsbury. Yeah, north of town. Thank you, Jim. That would be an idea. Um, Ted. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's only a little wind. Uh, it's just a pity that. that Nobody had um, 
or presumably have perhaps explored the possibilities of actually taking on the seven side bond club, which is um, and all the greens on there, which is at St Julian's. Um, that that that's been vacant for two or three years following a, a uh, uh, I don't know a, a, a breakup between all the committee members. And it, there's one down there which has a long history. And the greens that are quite well known, I think, used for county teams on a regular basis and everything else. It's just a personal, as I say, a personal uh, week really for, for the, the, the opportunity wasn't taken to actually transfer across to to seven side, which would have been really appropriate. I think that is further away though, isn't it? Just that margin, mate. It's all margin Latin career, isn't it? I think it's, uh, it's a bit awkward for the full community because we don't know the, yeah. the area, the, like local members, but I think it's a good idea for it to be distributed, but I don't know enough about it. So how can we go forward on this with this proposal? How can we do that? Thank you, um, to you, Chair, as, as um, the officer explained, the revised heads of terms would limit any distribution to the North Area of Shrewsbury, which would in fact cover what I think um, more or less what Mr Kilby um, was suggesting. Um, so I think that that was answered to back to Councillor Hunt. So he, on that basis, said that he might be prepared to second. I don't yeah. know if he was confirming that, Chair. Thank you. I think my exact terms were providing that's confirmed. I would be happy to second that it was confirmed. Okay. So I'm still happy to second. Okay, thank you. Do we have any more speakers on this? No, we've got a seconder. We have the condition change there. So, George, do you want to No, no, I'm going to vote. Oh, okay. Okay. Can I just say, Chair, the condition hasn't changed in, in as much as it was in the updated. It wasn't your thing yet. Okay, cheers. Okay, so we'll take vote. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Barrett? It's the white one. 
and here's an, uh, another one. Uh, as you can see, it's had extensions added onto it previously, and this application is basically to refurbish it and uh, modernise it so that it's, it's suitable uh, for a, a wheel and wheelchair friendly. The two storied one, as I've indicated, is located within the Bellevue conservation area and, as I've indicated, Article 4 direction in place. It is considered that development on site is acceptable in relation to these destinations. All the proposed external development is limited to the rear elevation of the dwelling and proposes extending the rear footprint and upgrading from existing on site. With some of it appears substantial in scale, it is considered by officers of the balance <coughs> proposed development is acceptable in consideration of the impacts on the conservation area as well as surrounding residential privacy and amenity. And with all the report does not refer to ecological matters, it is recommended in this instance that an informative notes are attached to any approval notice issued, highlighting the bats of protecting species and any harm to their habitat is a criminal offence. Uh, and also an informative in respect of nesting birds and their protection during the breeding season. As you can see, the, the, the changes to the house are uh, to the rate, they're not the original roof line of the house, which is, which is the front piece in front of the front. Uh, it is noted to the town council have raised no objections to the proposal and no letters of objection have been received from members of the public. <coughs> In conclusion, as indicated on balance, the proposed development is considered acceptable and in accordance with relevant local plan policies. And the recommendation is one of approval subject to conditions as outlined in Appendix 1, attached to the report, and the two informatives with regards to protection of nesting birds and bat protection. That concludes my presentation on this application, Mr Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that. And then we have no speakers on this. Thank you so much, welcome to the floor, and we'll start off with Ted. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Chair. Uh, if I could um, propose we support the officer's recommendation. Joyce. I'm very happy to second that. I think it points to the fact that uh, the old gentleman is related to one of our councillors. It wouldn't be here, so I think it's a no brainer. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Steve. I can say the same. Okay, yes. any more comments? Or... Okay, we'll go straight to the vote. Show of hands, I think I'm happy with that. Show of hands, <coughs> I'll be fully in favour. <laughs> Unanimous, thank you very much. Okay, we shall move on to item seven. Landlord and Edgiston when And Jane Clement is proposed pre sorry, is doing this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this application concerns... Uh, Jane, could you just move mic a bit closer to you, please? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. uh, the application concerns 1.16 hectares uh, of field located to the north of Esterson at Wem. Um, the location um, the application seeks consent for the change of use of the field and water paddock, the formation of a new vehicle access, the erection of stadium for horses, and other associated external works. We should go back to the next slide. The next slide. As proposed. Um, the, the application is a resubmission following the refusal of an earlier application. Uh, the reasons for refusing the previous scheme include concerns that the proposal was both excessive and disproportionate to the land subject to the application and would detract from the current open character of the land and adversely impact on fishing measures that character surrounding the rural area and landscape. This current submission aims to address those previous reasons for refusal with a reduced and recited scheme. If we can just scroll back on the slides to the next one. That was the, this slide shows the previous refused scheme, which was uh, a quad arrangement and four stable blocks. Okay, we can go back to the 
And then on the next slide down, we have a, a cross section at the top of the slides which shows the position in, in the lift. Positioning of the stables within the field and, and members who visited the site this morning stood on the field and were able to see that. And then the next slide down is the actual uh, next slide down is the actual stable buildings. So the, the same, there'll be two of those arranged in any shape. Okay. Um, to draw the attention of members that since the uh, right of the report, we've had three additional letters, um, letters of rejection, which are in the update sheet, but uh, officers consider that no material uh, considerations have been raised that haven't already been covered or discussed in the officer report. So, uh, moving on to the main issues, well, they're considered to be the principle of development of having regards to the location of the site and the impact of development on the local environment, including on the character and appearance of the local rural area, landscape and amenity, highways and drainage uh, concerns have also been raised. Uh, in respect of the sustainable location issues, the objectors are concerned that the site can't sustain six forces, and the location is unsustainable in that forces will frequently be transported to and from the site for exercise training events and showing. Uh, the agent argues that the site can sustain six horses with supplementary feeding and that those horses will get size on the land or the road, local road network and otherwise transported to and from site for training and events, which he argues is a situation common to many horse owners who participate in dressage, which I think I'm showing. Uh, the applicants have been renting land in North Shropshire and elsewhere for the past six years and experienced problems finding and retaining rental land. Currently, they're rent renting land in Staffordshire, which is an hour's travel from the applicant's property. Now, they've acquired and purchased this land at Esterton. It's said that this will stop the uncertainty for the families and offer the potential to reduce their access, access time. Um, the Parish Council and objections are concerned that the development of the site in this location also raises welfare, safety and security issues. In response, the agent argues that the welfare and safety of the horses is paramount to the owners, uh, as is their security. The horses will have feed, water, shelter and exercise and will be secure either in stables or on paddock and behind a hedge and fence boundary and secure gated access. Moving on to amenity in respect of potential exposure to the first impact on the amenity of neighbouring residents, the issues of noise and odour have been referred to the Public Protection Officer, um, who's, um, as a consequence, the orientation of the stable buildings has been changed so that the back of the stables is um, collectively sort of encloses any noise within the yard. And um, the principal officer is principal. Uh, Principal officer is satisfied, the public protection officer is satisfied that this will not result in the unacceptable impact on the residential amenities and surrounding properties in relation to the private equestrian use. Uh, further, as regards external lighting, then this can be controlled by way of time condition and light pollution, and as recommended by the, the, uh, the council's apologist as well. Um, uh, mention has also been mentioned of horse funeral storage, but any we all will generally need to be managed, stored and disposed of in accord with other legislation so that it doesn't cause a problem. Uh, in considering the impact on the character and appearance of the rural locality, members visited the site this morning, reviewed the site for themselves, also considers the siting and design of the building and development to be less intrusive than the previously refused scheme and resulting in no adverse impact on local or historic environment features or to adversely impact upon the local landscape. Uh, highways is a particular concern of contention, whilst the objectors highway safety concerns of knowledge. The Council of Highway has been consulted and is satisfied that with recommended plan condition, conditions of approval in place, the development is capable of meeting with highway standards and there are no sustainable highway safety grounds on which to base an objection in this case. 
again, members visited the site this morning and reviewed the proposed access arrangements. The fact that the, uh, the proposal crosses freehold land owned by the council has been highlighted, but the relevant notice has been served on the council as landowner and the land in separate ownership does not prevent granting the planning permission. Finally, drainage. The council drainage officer has raised no objections to the application, but in recognition of the agricultural <coughs> land and minerals reports uh, that have been submitted, they identify the land as having drainage issues. So the imposition of planning conditions are recommended to secure surface and dirty water drainage scheme for prior approval. Uh, to conclude, on balance, officers consider the revised proposal the subject of this application. Uh, it has supported by additional information and revised plans is acceptable, will not give rise to unacceptable impacts in poor environmental quality, highway safety, and existing residential, residential amenity, and is capable of compliance with prevailing policies as relevant. Um, and also, it can additionally be adequately addressed through the imposition of appropriate planning conditions of approval. So the officer recommendation is therefore one of approval, subject <coughs> to the imposition of the conditions listed in the committee report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> we have three speakers in this application. So again, we've got Neil Spoonley, would we like to come up, please? Three minutes, Neil. Would you like a 30 second warning? That's not a good idea. Thank you very much. It's the bottom on your mm. right of the. That's the one. Right, so I'm here to represent way. the views of the and the concerns of the local residents. We've had no notice of this meeting. There's been no consultation. The, the notice for the um, development was hidden behind a hedge up a private lane. So nobody had any information, and I did not know that this project existed until Friday. So all that you've got, and I hope some of you have read the paper that I produced, and you've seen the other residents' comments. They have only been produced in the last few days. And I think that is appalling. The basis of the residents' concerns turn on the number of horses. The number of stables is almost irrelevant because everything that concerns the residents, be it noise, be it clatter, be it debris, be it drains, is based around how many horses are allowed to be residents on that patch. The Royal Society of Horses, their recommendation is 1.5 acres per horse. The horse and hounds on the internet, we spoke to the Royal Society this morning. The uh, horse and hounds, rough one acre per horse. On the basis of that, although they can be increased slightly due to supplementary feeding, I would suggest that no more than three horses ever be allowed to reside on that patch because the husbandry of those horses and their health will suffer. The stables, as I said, are little relevant. There can be two, four, six, eight, or ten, but it is the horses that matter. All horses on that field have to be trafficked away for any training, skill development, going to events, and for any serious exercise. The field is not big enough for serious exercise, and that seems to be admitted by the owners. If you count, and I hope somebody has counted, the number of horses being trafficked out of that site on a regular basis. I hope somebody has, but it is dependent on the number of horses. The gates to every trafficked horse will be opened and shut. You've got 30 seconds. You've got 30 seconds. The gates will be opened and shut four times for every trafficked horse going out and coming back. That will create on that main road a significant safety issue because the gates proposed are on the cusp of a bend. The visibility is not unreasonable, but there is a telegraph pole blocking it. And I hope some of you realise how much traffic 
goes up and down that road at high speed, paying no attention to national speed limits. The sole benefit of this project. Thank you, Neil. That's time. I'm sorry. Right. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Right, now we have the local member, <clears throat> Councillor Towers. You have five minutes, sir. And then give me back to work. Thank you. I would like a 30 second warning. Try. <laughs> Okay. Thank you uh, to the pre-planning meeting uh, for agreeing to put this matter on our agenda today uh, and for topping this with this morning's site visit. It was in truth a close one thing to get the range. The reason for this request is that the parish council residents, as soon as they got to hear about it, and ourselves as division members, are all of one mind that this is not a good application as it currently stands. One where rural, rural parish council has written to me to say we discussed this application a number of times, but the applicant did not attend our meetings to enable us to question this plan. It's now obvious that the applicant made no effort to consult with neighbours, probably in the hope there would be no objection. However, where rural parish council has a number of councillors from agricultural backgrounds and some who have equestrian experience. Please do not take notice of the fewer number of public responses. We'll see from uh, Mr. Wheeler's comments that they were unaware of this application until very late in the day, and there's now a very strong, increasing strong feeling against this particular application. This is, as we've been told, a second application that in truth answers some of the questions and concerns of the first one in September 2021, um, page 74, which explains our officer's reasoning for its dismissal. This is one for up to six horses, not eight, removes four water closets, alters the layout and so on to reduce harm to the area. But it doesn't get to the point of balancing or even benefiting the area. There are still significant concerns as the parish council submission points out. For example, as we've already told, DEFRA figures point out that 1.16 hectares are needed for two grazing horses, and this is 2.81 hectares before taking off that as needed for stables and roadway and bell-shaped entrance on the, off the highway. So for or less horses, three have been heard about, maybe the best that could be accommodated. Next door, they have a larger acreage and can only accommodate three grazing donkeys for a start. Please take particular notice of the strong feelings of this application given by the Parish Council on section 6.2.14 and ourselves as local members in 6.2.15 on page 76 of the officer's report. That they have tried to mitigate in defence of their approval. Amongst other points that are the scale and design of the proposed building, brick and tiles for a stable, sure something more to plan for the future, housing and transportation, two horse blocks and two travel trays for horses are being planned for moving horses, food in and out, because as intensity of stocking increases, so the amount of grass and food, and food will be net, need to be increased too, which means more traffic. There is no provision for garaging part of the site on the plans, so there must be frequently entry and leaving. These horses will need to be transported from the site for exercise, as well as showing and competition. But the B5476 is a very fast, dangerous road with a serious accident there only a few years ago. Well, it's all the time years ago. Note, every time, love to go that one. Today, those on the site visit saw a fairly quiet B5476, but this is the scene of many accidents over the years, including fatalities. We were just there for, during a quarter period. Chancellor Vernon, who was present at the meeting this morning, said, I just wanted to reinforce the information regarding the land owned by uh, Shropshire Council. This stretch of road was narrowed years ago. In view of the road danger, a part of the field came into the ownership of Shropshire Council with a view to widening the road. In fact, the hedge was removed and a new fence erected and new hedge planted further back. The road bend is still the same as a continuous cause for concern for residents. The plan to widen the road never happened and uh, made the Shropshire Council allow a cut through to the land for a new access. How can this application even be considered if the Shropshire Council is not officially given permission to cut through to make this driveway? Mr. Wheeler, also present this morning, said that moving the hedge back has actually simply made the road faster and more dangerous. Incidentally, there's a contraction in reasoning, contradictory in reasoning in the report. At one point, the horses have been taken to and from the site for exercises listed at listed question centres, not near the vicinity. And then it refers to exercising up on their land or on local road network. You cannot exercise the local road network without using the self same B5476. Please bear in mind what you've heard today, each day was the size of a double bedroom. So there's provision for added capacity of horses in the plan or something else. The incline off the road <coughs> the on the site is quite steep. So to reduce the gradient, it takes more of the site out to get it level. 
Uh, mention keeps being made in the officer report is only for private, not professional use. This does not in itself justify the application. It does nothing to reduce the intensity of stocking, transportation issues, and road safety This is a sporadic permanent development and open country site that we have a scale and a road the character, section 6.7.1, and it will not be outweighed by any lasting social or economic benefit to make it in conflict with policies CS5, CS6, and CS17. The second application still fails to meet the required standards set out in policy MD2 regarding sustainable design. And finally, in reference to policy MD12 about the natural environment where harm versus benefit are weighed up, this second application can still be regarded as harmful. In summary, for these and all of the reasons given the submissions from the Parish Council, very concerned parish residents and ourselves as local members, I ask the committee to refuse this application and so allow the opportunity for a better one to come forward. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. <clears throat> Thank you. Right. We have um, right the agent. Let's go forward, please. Just give us a second so we can move to back. You have three minutes. We'd like to close the second one. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to speak. Um, I think uh, the officer's report was very complete and detailed, uh, set out most of the um, details that we had all the way through and the consultation with the officer over various elements of it and from the previous application as well. So I don't have a lot to add to it. And I think some of the um, comments that have been made, I mean, from residents, I mean, we, we have got no control over that. The site notice was posted. Uh, there's been parish council uh, meetings, so we can't have gone out to that if, if people haven't actually seen it. Um, from the point of view of the parish council on uh, moving horses, many horses are contained in paddocks around the, the county. We have to keep them outside the, the central areas. Um, and transport is one part of it, and especially in this particular instance, because these horses are used for a lot of eventing showing and everything else so in which case travel is part of their exercise as much as anything else so that's why they're contained there the keeping of six horses on that piece of land is permissible you can keep six horses on it you supplementally feed them as well and they can raise so the numbers that have been mentioned today are down to grazing horses rather than supplementally feeding them so from that point of view the, they are able to be kept on that that piece of land and of course because of the type of horses they are they will be well looked after because they are uh, showing animals and uh, very important to the owners from the point of view of the stables uh, i think the officer has mentioned in the report there we've gone from brick and tile perfectly normal in the environment there um, and nothing out of out of the ordinary from the point of view of the structures okay so i've got nothing else to add. thank, thank you very much Okay, so speakers done. James, would like to come back on the English points. Well, Philip, I'm going to let Jim comment on the application. The only thing I wanted to point out to start with is uh, I, I noted the comments made by the uh, local resident, and I've also noted what the agency has said now with regards to advertising the application. A SAT notice was placed on the gate, the parish council were notified, and possibly we do not notify immediate na neighbours now by letter. Uh, and as such, the council followed all the appropriate procedures with regarding advertising of this application. Thanks, Jim. Jane, let's come back before we open some floor. Um, uh, put it through the questions to the floor, please. Okay, thank you. Right, open up the floor. Ted? In the absence of anyone else. Sure. Uh, oh, my apologies for being unable to actually attend the uh, site visit this morning. I do regret that, but I, I, I've looked very carefully um, over the last couple of days at this particular application, simply because of its the focus that's obviously been placed on this. And I do, uh, on balance, I think I support the parish and the local members' views that um, uh, this is not an appropriate development. What I've got a particular concern about is the use of um, uh, real high quality materials for the construction of uh, a stable block, which uh, um, is open to question, I think. So I can't support it, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you, Chef. Um, yeah, taking on board what, what Ted's just said, I'm not necessarily sure I agree with that. We really have to focus on what the application is and not what it might be at some time in the future. And what it is at the moment is very clearly a, a stable block. Um, I mean, any future application on those would need to be considered by officers and the planning committee and dealt with but at that time. However, we are in the here and now and we can only deal with the here and now. Um, I personally have looked at the road and I didn't feel it was sufficiently bad to, to, to warrant a refusal based on what the officers have said and in particular what our highways officer has said. Um, it, in a way that hinges to me and also having listened to the speakers, it, it seemed quite clear that um, perhaps one of the concerns was more about stocking density um, than, than it was about the actual bricks, bricks and mortar. Um, and whilst I'm not unsympathetic, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I will look at officers at the end of this for guidance, um, whether people choose to keep one horse there or ten horses there is, is up to them and it's not really part of the, the application because we're looking at the bricks and mortar, how it fits into the locale and, and, and the overall use of land. And you know, there are agencies um, who can be who can give advice and take legal action should they feel the animal's welfare is not being sufficiently well looked after and it's um, it's not really really well it isn't really part of the planning ap application uh, for us. Um, I have listened to the local member. I, I, I'm not unsympathetic, um, but I can't find any reason personally that, that I could go against Johnson's recommendation on this. I'll be interested to see if another member can, can furnish one, um, but I think they might struggle. Thank you, Steve. Um, well, I'll, firstly, the notice notification as um, the boss Philip says that uh, everybody was not everybody was told and actually the first people that actually see um, a notification are the neighbours and normally the first thing uh, when a notification goes up is that starts a, um, a process of either agreeing or, or complaining and if the, the neighbours haven't seen it I'm not saying that it wasn't there they're not saying it wasn't it but it clearly wasn't visible for the neighbours to see. Uh, so I can't comment whether it was or it wasn't, but obviously there's something there. Oh, oh, and usually when you build stables, they're normally for horses. So um, whether it's six or eight, uh, and again, I didn't know what DEFRA's um, minimums or maximums were, but it seems an awful lot of uh, horses for a, a, a small place so I can't support this on on that really uh, on the on the stocks that it could possibly hold that surely has got to be part of any planning application of what the end use is going to be for. Karen. Thank you Sean. Just a couple of questions on the mini tech. Um, one of the objections was regarding the composting toilet being quite close to the house behind the field. I mean, is there any room for the commerce to be moved to the front of the several, for example? Another comment was on the drainage off the back of the field, but being quite a, a steep uh, uh, incline there. Is there also any, any possibility a, a bond of some sort could be put across the bottom of the field to mitigate the drainage? To just, just curious. Right, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to support the parish council and also the residents who are objecting, but unfortunately, I can't. Um, I've looked at the report and I've looked for reasons um, that we can do that. Uh, but like Councillor Hunt, I think if this went to appeal, it would be lost. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. I just make a comment now from the chair. About the mix in what's happened to the runoff, I didn't actually see the report. The runoff from the mix and change. Answer that, please. Um, conditions are proposed to deal with both um, dirty water runoff and surface water runoff, whereby we would request drainage details for prior approval by condition. Thank you. Okay, Mark. Well, yeah, it was, it was a good it was a good site visit. Um, 
I did notice there's a nice big power line going right over the top, so it wouldn't be a great place to live underneath those. And someone did decide they wanted to try and make this into a house in the future, which will obviously need further plan permission. Um, Mr. Spoonley, I think, spoke to us. Um, he was making quite a big thing about the noise of the the the, the horses being loaded onto the trailer. Um, but then he made a big play, or Edward made a big play about the the, no, the traffic that goes up and down that road. So, I, and I couldn't see that with the hedges that are there now that the noise would be an issue. Um, I can't see too much wrong with this. I think the family seem to need a place. And I, 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 it's a rural occasion, a rural place. I mean, you, you could have chicken sheds on there instead. There's lots of things that could happen to that field. It needs something on it, I presume. So, I, I support it. I can't see too much of a problem with it, sir. So. Thank you. Let's speak to you, Jen. Would you like to make any comments with the discussion so far? Yeah, if I can just make it clear that the application is not just for the stables, it is to change the use of the land for grazing of horses and the keeping of horses, and, and uh, that is allowed for in the consent in that the horses would be supplementary fed. So whilst the, the DEFRA guidelines are not met, the application will allow for the stabling and the feeding of the horses on the land. And uh, I think in um, 6.33 of the FC report, it does say uh, at 1.16 hectares an area using the DEFRA guidelines, the land, the land could sustain two grazing horses if no supplementary feeding. So that's the situation as it is. The guidelines go on to state that a smaller area may be adequate when horses are primarily housed and grazing areas are used only for occasional turnout. So in this case, the stables would allow for, for the animals to be housed and supplementary fare. Um, as regards the sort of the intensity of the use, the number of the horses, I think, is one of the main concerns, and that in turn leads to the concern about additional movements to and from the site. Um, but then again, we have consulted with our highway officer and the highway officer has raised an objection on highway grounds and they have all the information that's submitted with the application in order to, to, for them to formulate that recommendation. Um, Councillor mentioned the composting toilet. We, um, in the previous application, there were four toilets proposed in a whole new septic tank and drainage system. That's completely gone, and hence we have a composting toilet now, one single toilet. And it is a composting toilet, so there's no drainage. We've consulted the principal uh, public protection officer, and she has no issues with the composting toilet in, in that location, so we have requested that it be relocated. Um, drainage was the other issue, which I think we've covered before, but uh, when the chair asked the question, is that um, it's in, included in the conditions. We haven't got any details of surface water running, runoff, or say in washing the stables or the horses, how the dirty water would be dealt with, but we can cover that by conditions, uh, including the condition that um, we, can, we can have those details for, for prior approval, prior to the development being actually brought into use. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. Okay, any more comments and proposals? Thank you, Vince. Well, I would propose the officers were well, not happy to, but I would quite content to propose the officers' recommendation based on the debate earlier. Thank you, Vince. I'll we'll second, second it. You'll we'll second it. Any other comments? Okay, we'll go to the vote then. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so this is the uh, to uh, allow the Commission in accordance with the Office of Recommendation. Councillor Barry? Four. Uh, Councillor Birchard? Four. Councillor Park? Against. Councillor Davenport? Against. Councillor Hunt? Four. Councillor Jones? Four. Councillor Isherwood? Four. Oh, this is Councillor Wynne. Four. That has been passed, Thank you very much. Okay, now we move to item eight. Landings Whittington. Excuse me. And um, presenting Philip. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My name's Philip as well. That's okay. <laughs> 
Oh, right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. OK, uh, this application proposes the direction of outbuildings, out, which uh, uh, outbuilding, uh, outdoor kitchen, new gated access and external works to include two pavilion structures within the curtilage of a dwelling known as Blandings at Willington, Shrewsbury. Uh, there are no updates on the update sheet on this application. Applications presented to committee owing to objections from Willington Parish Council, as outlined in paragraph 4.11 of the officer's report, as well as letters of objections from members of the public. The dwelling known as Blandings is a recently constructed detached dwelling and set in a reasonably large domestic curtilage. And surrounded by neighbouring dwellings. Blandings is a modern contemporary uh, property and when planning was approved for the property, permitted development rights were removed and hence the application to the council in the format as it is, as some of the proposed development in normal circumstances will be considered permitted development. Further details on the individual structures are set out in the committee report in, from paragraph 6.22 to 6.25. The application site is outlined in red and this includes the access to the property from the public highway. And you'll notice the properties around it. Uh, next slide is the proposed uh, this existing block plan uh, showing the dwelling as it is now uh, uh, here and the garage to the front uh, in, in the, within the curtilage. Next slide. It shows the uh, the building being constructed to the side and the development in the rear of the property, which includes two pagodias. Uh, here's the outbuilding and the outdoor kitchen. Uh, this slide shows the proposed elevation plans of the uh, proposed outbuilding. And here's the proposed external kitchen and uh, its detail. It's open sided uh, and to the side of the property. Uh, lastly, visualizations of how they all how they will look. Once constructed, the one peculiar is is included sitting at seating area. This one here, uh, the other one is for a hot tub. And, and now the photographs of the site. That's the road leading to the site. Uh, this one shows the dwelling, very contemporary in design, and and recently constructed. This you can see in a rural location. This one shows the, the grounds around the house. Uh, obviously, um, not lawned and landscape to, to what I consider a very high standard. And so, we can put the applications now for outdoor and outdoor entertainment, etc. Uh, there's another view of the garden to the side. Uh, there's a tall brick wall to the rear of the prop side, probably by the way, which you can see in that photograph. Uh, here's some more on the other side. And the other, the other side again. Uh, this one shows the detached garage in front of the property. Uh, and <coughs> to get an idea of, of the scale and the um, design on front on, on site. Very modern in, in, in design. And that's the house as you enter the site. Clearly, this application in consideration of the existing dwelling on site is for subservient structures within the curtilage of a modern detached dwelling, which is not typical of the surrounding built environment. The proposal on balance with a condition attached to any approval notice, it's actually condition number three, officers recommend in Appendix 1, 
in order to control use is considered acceptable in relation to surrounding residential amenity and privacy. This matter is further explored in paragraph 6.33 of the Oxford Report. I urge you to take note of the wording of condition number three uh, with regards to uh, use of the property. What was the proposed development appears to be development in relation to outdoor social activity. It is in relation to residential development within the curtilage of the attached dwelling and related activities that occur in many residential curtilages. Officers consider the curtilage large enough to accommodate development, to which officers also consider will not have a detrimental impact on the surrounding built environment or that of residential immunity and privacy. Uh, with a condition attached, as I've indicated, regarding occupation of the house, considered acceptable on this as aspect. The proposed entrance gates also considered acceptable. In conclusion, having con considered all the material considerations, on balance, this development is considered acceptable, and the recommendation is one of approval subject to the conditions as outlined in Appendix 1 attached to the officer report. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. That concludes my presentation on this application. Thanks for that. Just to have a word with the solicitor. <coughs> Yeah, it's just a, somebody did request to speak. We've got one speaker, but somebody else requested to speak. Um, and the agent was informed of that and they didn't want to reply. So I'm going to let the other person speak as well against it. OK, first counsel. So firstly, could we have the blood resident speak multiple first, please? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Seeing you three minutes, it was like a 30 second warning. Uh, I'd like a few seconds just to arrange my papers. Yeah, no problem. So so when you. When you yeah, sure. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. I am Stephen Walton. My wife and I own nine Woodlands Plus. I noticed a lot of this has been um, phased over with, with the recent description here. The boundaries, first of all, on there are not accurate. OK. Secondly, we object strongly um, to the numerous inaccuracies drawn up by base architecture and design within those supposed boundaries. We moved in in May 21. The purpose, the purchase of the house came a parcel of land that lies beyond our current south facing garden fence, which abuts the area of the landings, where the proposed gym and external kitchen has been drawn up by base architecture. That would be right in the corner of our property, that far away from our fence. OK, so the proposed gym and external kitchen been drawn up by base architecture. Our current fence was erected by the previous owners of number nine, Mr. and Mrs. John Stevens, in an attempt to tidy up the garden prior to completion of our sale. This was to obscure at the time an unsightly view of building works with the um, original building um, of the Dundee's which included the demolition of a boundary wall. However, this fence does not reflect our true boundary or that of the Blandings, as on the 4th of June 20, yes, 2021, the Land Registry Possessory Title Order was issued to us, number SL251612, okay? And on that, you'll see that, that corner, a little mark there, is where 
at South Basin Garden, of which two land ends. So we actually own a little strip of land there. OK, <coughs> I'm going to show you more of that, but that's the only strip of land there. Our solicitors confirmed in writing to us, along with the final words, the title is yours, not theirs. Whilst we appreciate this may be a civil court matter, it is critical to be heard at this point that this land is inaccurately included in both architecture's citing of the proposed outdoor kitchen, which incidentally, according to them, only allows for, as I said, that much between us and their outdoor kitchen. Okay, we categorically do not consent to any construction work to commence an our parcel of land or any further removal, and there has been a complete removal of trees. I'm sorry, Steve, your time's up, I'm afraid. That's what I need to finish. Thank you very much. I'm sure that this is sure that may be wrong. Not being yet much pleased about that. Thank you. Right, it's, uh, I'm delighted to speak. Philip? The correct Philip this time. The correct Philip. Apologies for that. I've gone down on here, so please tell your clerk to do it through the right. I thought you should have to apologise. Right, just a clarification. My name is Phil Heath. I am chairman of Wigginton Parish Council. Okay. Um, Wigginton Parish Council have a policy of informing immediate neighbours of any planning application uh, we receive that may impact them to give them the opportunity to uh, to comment. The majority of applications don't generally give any comments or, or some that can be simply resolved. So on this occasion we received a number of complaints and objections from residents in the Woodlands which adjoins um, the Blandits. So at our PC meeting on the 6th of July we reviewed the planning application together with the objections and unanimously agreed that in our opinion the objections are valid. The PC therefore object to the development of the following reasons. The design of the GMO building's hard landscaping is very overbearing and in our view over out of proportion to the rest of the property. These when combined with the other recent developments like the double garage um, that have taken place create a very high ratio of development buildings to uh, within the curtilage of the property. The development will have a significant impact in our view on neighbouring houses with regards to overlooking, overshadowing, loss of privacy, noise and disturbance. Uh, the creation of an outside barbecue, sorry, the creation of an outside kitchen in itself implies that it be used more for more than just the occasional barbecue. Uh, I think these views are probably supported by uh, the Environmental Protection Report section uh, and the report which said uh, they recommended a 2.4 metre high acoustic barrier be erected to protect other residents. The PC considered this application to be an overdevelopment of an already heavily remodelled older dwelling. This is not a brand new construction. OK, this was an older dwelling called the Blandings. I've lived in Willington for 40 years. The Blandings existed when I arrived. Um, and it's in the centre of a small, very small rural village of about 100 houses. We also have concerns that it doesn't appear to be a detailed SUDS report. Um, and that the proposed extensive hard patio area will generate water runoff onto our village green. As contrary to section 2.1 of the report that says it's Shropshire Castle Freehold. The green is not Shropshire Castle Freehold. It's two thirds owned by Wing Parish Council. We raised the money for it and one third owned by Shropshire Council. Um, we feel this runoff from the hard uh, area will actually just exasperate the problem of flooding. Uh, sorry, I should say the area adjacent to the house is actually known locally as the wet area because it floods extensively when we get heavy rain. So, we do ask for this uh, proposal to be rejected in its kind of form. We have no objection to the um, the entrance gates and the drive, but we do have objections to the rest of the development. Um, as you've obviously just been made aware, 
There's also a local boundary dispute, and whilst we advise the residents this is a civil matter, nothing that uh, Parish Council or Shropshire Council can resolve. We would, however, recommend. Time, time up, sorry. Okay. Thank you, Rebecca. Just hang off your mic, please. Mr. Chair, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Uh, can we just clarify about the boundary? I'm a bit unsure how that works. Whether we can move forward on this until the boundaries sorted out. Was the withdrawing? Uh, the, sorry, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, officer has referred to this in, in section six point four of a report and other matters. As far as we're concerned, uh, the application has been filled in correctly with regards to what information we've had. Also, the case officer has been on site to check how it looks, and she had no reason to to uh, dispute what was said. Uh, other than that, this would be a civil matter uh, between the uh, parties concerned with regards to uh, the banning dispute. Do you want me other, other yes, topics. Yes, if you would please. Yeah. Right. The, the other issues. Uh, this dwell, replacement or remodeled dwelling, whatever it may be, <coughs> the photograph shows there. Uh, when it was allowed, permitted environment rights were removed because of the rather contemporary design. Uh, it's in amongst uh, traditional type housing, and it's not in what I would personally consider in keeping with surrounding dwelling. Okay. Hence, PD was removed. However. I noticed the first gentleman who spoke was concerned about the distance to his boundary. Uh, and partially, uh, permitted development rights allow development up to the boundary if it's of a certain uh, scale and size. Uh, the development in the rear of this dwelling would fall into that. So if PD hadn't have been removed from this property, they'd have been allowed to go ahead with that in any case. Uh, uh, the other development, the larger development, the outdoor gym, yes, that needs permission. And uh, but the smaller scale development in in the in the rear of the of the dwelling is not would normally be permitted development. Um, I can't think of anything now unless the sister wants to try about adding on what I've said on with regards to the um, boundary treatment. Okay, thank you for that. Right, I'll open to the floor then. Hey. Oh, sorry, no, Steve first, then thanks. Um, well, so is lying, aren't they? So, um, and I know anybody can build in your garden or. Um, you take that back, please. Yeah, okay, I'll take that back. Well, they are. But, so, uh, yes, I'll, I'll take that back. But somebody. Through you, Chair, I must intervene, I'm afraid, that, that that could be seen as a defamatory comment, so I just okay. think if you could perhaps uh, moderate your. Okay, I will refer that. Refer that. But actually, while somebody can apply to build on somebody else's land, Whilst, whilst, whilst we know that is this planning, we should consider it. Vince. Thank you. I have to say, um, I'm surprised this got built in the first place. Um, I did hear a fellow councillor say they quite like it. Um, mm. I quite like it, but not in the context of where it is. However, that's not what we're, we're here to discuss. Um, I could apply for planning permission on my neighbour's back garden or their front garden, or I could apply to have their house knocked down and rebuilt. Unfortunately, because that then becomes a civil matter, uh, it would never happen. It wouldn't happen because they wouldn't allow me to, or they'd charge me a huge <laughs> amount of money uh, to be able to buy it off them and do it. Um, there is nothing we can do about about, about the boundaries, and, and as you rightly said, that, that is a civil thing, but we are not able to take that in as a planning consideration. Um, I have to say, I it, it's almost, we've got what we've got there, but to put all the other little buildings in almost seems to me like people crossing all sorts of little bits and bobs to make something that's to me, already doesn't look right, look even worse. I, I mean, we'll be interested to see what other members have to say, but I'm, 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 I'm going to really work hard to try and find a reason to, to reject this, and, and not because of the boundaries or, or anything else, but purely and simply because of the, the application. And you know, obviously, we heard from Philip about PD and how it's been removed, um, but it has been removed, and therefore, they need planning permission to do it. 
you know, um, and I, I'm, I'm not keen on it. I'm afraid I'm not keen on the amount of little bits that are going to pop up here, there and everywhere. And I know we can put individual conditions onto different bits and bobs, but I think I think um, there's going to be so many individual little bits that, that it's going to be difficult to do that and, and, and make it to be almost a, a coherent site. Interesting choice. Yes, my comment is these out of scale things that they want to put there are out of scale, in my opinion, with the development. I actually like that house, I like the way it looks, uh, and be the sort of house I would go for, which is probably relevant to what we're talking about now. Yeah, but, I think, but, but I do <laughs> think that putting these other things on the outside of it uh, is out of scale with the development. Uh, I don't know whether I can say that I just scale with the street scene because it is actually on the street scene, but that's my comment, Chair. Right, thank you. Not in keeping with the area. Look at it. I'm still just not as confused about the, where the acoustic panel in, which is no longer felt to be necessary, whereabouts it was going to be placed. Could, could uh, Mr. Monahue perhaps assist me with his. Um, Dexterity with the uh, around the kitchen. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, the acoustic fencing officers don't consider it necessary. Yeah, but this is domestic to a dwelling, the private dwelling. Anybody can have a barbecue in the kitchen, yeah. in the sorry, in the in, in the garden, etc. Uh, we consider officers in regulated services have separate powers yeah. if there's a nuisance yeah. there, yeah. which didn't come, they can do under. Yeah. Therefore, uh, our only concern was. If this house was an Airbnb or left for holidays, because obviously mm -hmm. people come to a problem, they don't have the respect of their neighbours mm -hmm. as what most people have yeah. who, who live amongst them. Therefore, we recommended condition number three uh, as a task approval notice, if you read it, with regards to shifting uh, it to the occupants of the dwelling. Yeah. And therefore, uh, as this was not for public entertaining, uh, we don't consider the equipment fence necessary. That, that, thanks, Mr. Bonnie, for that. It, it's very comprehensive. Could you actually show me where on the map the acoustic paneling potentially was going to go? The, the, the acoustic paneling that was felt to be on the safe. That's a pretty amazing one to be that. Um, well, it would be uh, around the boundaries. Uh, uh, this, this is the one boundary along here. Yeah. And there's the rear boundary along here. This is the one oh, pavilion. Yeah, so there's another one there. There's the there's the yeah. uh, outdoor kitchen. Oh, yeah. So you that, yeah. And here's the uh, the gym. Yeah. yeah. And while we're talking, we are checking out with the land registry the issue with regards uh, uh, oh, okay. the land ownership. Uh, I I'll just like to say the information we we've got so far indicates to do with another dwelling. Right, that's it's a, a dwelling adjacent to the site. So we're not convinced by uh, what we've heard, but if so members much. were mindful to support the um, mm -hmm. principle of this and you and you and you want it further looked into, we, we can further check after this if necessary. We've got a couple more speakers yet, so we'll let them do that. Edward. Well, I might just very brief, I think, on this one. Um, I, I'm with Councillor Barrow Lunch, you said, and I think it's uh, overdevelopment, really. It's very bitsy. It doesn't feel good for the building itself. So uh, I would uh, prefer not to accept this particular application. Gary? Thank you, Mr. Just um, uh, for a if we deferred this to a future meeting, would we be able to get more clarification on, on the boundary issues? No, it's yeah. still a matter, but from our point of view, as a, as a committee to make an important decision, would we better have well, a uh, we're, 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 more meeting, please. We're pretty confident by that we've been on the land registry <laughs> and we've established it's not even to do with this property, it's another one. Okay, thank you. So in that case, we we'll defer the uh, on that, on that, say that, on that no, on, I would say not, but I, I, I must make it clear, while I appreciate what you're saying about the scattered development in the rear cartilage, if we hadn't have removed permitted development mm. for this dwelling, there's nothing stopping people building structures like that. You have a lot of, of, um, uh, of ability to build 
in the arena garden now. Mm -hmm. uh, the only de development that is, is strictly controlled is development in front of the principal building line. Well, the, the fact you saw the photograph of the dwelling, this is where the principal mm -hmm. building line is. As you enter the property, that's the principal elevation. Uh, the development is all in the rear and to the side. I suspect if they were to take away the one building, the rest, if the permitted development rights hadn't been removed, <coughs> would be, as I say, permitted development. Can I just have a bit more clarification on the boundaries? Yes. Yes. So, Randy, you'd like to make comments? Well, through you, Chair, looking at the possessory title of it was um, indicated um, by um, the neighbour. Um, it goes up to the boundary um, of this site, but it doesn't appear to go into the boundary of the landings. Um, the concern would be obviously should there be any of the neighbours land included, which notices would need to have been served. It doesn't appear to be the case. Um, in terms of any dispute as to where precisely the boundary lies, as you've heard, that is a civil matter and not relevant to planning. Thank you. I'll leave that clarification. Thanks. But just, I'm going to look to Philip for a little bit of clarification because we, we, um, Philip keeps talking and probably rightly so, but perhaps I'm missing something here about how we remove the permitted development rights and that if we hadn't removed them, they could pretty well much put whatever they like. But to me, almost, and, and I'm sure you'll correct me if I'm wrong, and that's not relevant because we did remove them. Yes. And if we did remove them, but they can still do whatever they like because we're too afraid that under the inspector might come back and give us a slap on the wrist and say, you know, well, that we have allowed that had it been permitted development rights. Why did we bother removing them if, if mm. there wasn't a reason for doing it? Oh, it's like to come back. Yeah. It's to do with the scale of the house. There would be nothing stopping them building an extension of the rear of that dwelling, which would firstly get to the boundary if it was single story. And therefore, uh, uh, I I haven't got the uh, previous approval in front of me. Uh, however, it is a, whether it's a replacement or a seriously remodelled dwelling on site. It's not in keeping with the surrounding area, and hence the reason PD was removed because it it it, it was why well, I emphasise the contemporary design. I'm trying to attract his attention. Oh, sorry, I was listening. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Come back on No, I've nothing heard that. Well, we removed permitted development rights because the building's not in keeping with the, with the low cap, but all the little bits that are proposed to go on, the pagodas and the outdoor kitchen and everything, are in keeping with the building. That will therefore mm. says to me that they're not in keeping with the rest of the area either. Mm. So are we not able to reject this because they're, they're not, they're, they're, they're in, they, they highlight, they're going to highlight the fact that the building's not in keeping with the rest of the area more than you know, it, it may look good on that part, but it's going to make it look even worse for something that, that you've pretty well much said isn't in keeping with the local area anyway. Right. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Um, they seem to in height. Uh, there's the boundary treatment. As you can see, it's a very high brick wall. Can I ask you what impact are these structures going to have on, on the neighbouring residential curtilages visually? Yeah. I mean, I, I just feel that if, 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 if we, if, if it was felt necessary to remove the permitted development rights, there would be a reason for that. That reason for that was that the house was not in keeping with the local area. Now, what, what they're proposing to put in is in keeping with the house. So we may as well not have removed the permitted development rights and we wouldn't be sitting here doing this, would we? Because we, we've accepted that the house is not in keeping with the local area, but now we're going to we're, we're looking at a planning application to put a load of ancillary buildings around it that, that are not equally not in keeping with the area, which is the reason we removed the permitted development rights in the first place. And to work for Jane Raymond. Well done. <coughs> <coughs> I could comment on it. Come back on it. No, John, Philip. Hang on, one do it. I can see where Vince is coming from, but I can see what Philip's explained before. They could have sort of five bedroom extension on the top of that, and we wouldn't have liked that, would we? So I, I get that. I don't particularly like this. I think it's a bit tasteless, but I don't see any reason why we can't pass it either. So I, 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 I accept the officer's recommendation and propose it, I'm afraid. 
In answer to Councillor Vince Pant's uh, comments, uh, permitted development rights would allow a curtain to be covered in 50% in built development. Once you get to 50%, you can't increase it any further. Uh, do you think 50% of the curtains is covered in buildings? Yes. I'll show you the, the block plan now. At the moment. There you are. Yes. Oh, yeah. Remember the curtains includes the front of the green. Oh, yeah. And then many people have a good look. Which is which is the bit that you got at the because that's that's the bit of an issue because then that it, it affects the vision from the street scene. Well it's it, well, it actually you can't see the street scene, can you? Uh, it's 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 the neighbouring dwellings all around it. You have to drive from the public highway and then the, the curtilage is all within the red line. And unfortunately, uh, or I'm not saying unfortunately, regrettable as it may be to neighbours, uh, if that, like I said, that kitchen in the corner there, uh, it, it was in a dwelling where there was no PD roof, we can't, we've got no control over building it, over the building it, if it was within certain measurements, and that is, to give you a guide, single story. And then the, the two begonias, hot tub at the bottom here, the seating area, and the largest building is the one to the side of the gym. So I'll leave it up to you. Mike. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm struggling to find a reason to refuse this because it seems to me the owners just want to enjoy their garden uh, in the way they see fit. And the issue about the permitted development rights is unfortunate because any of their neighbours would be able to do any of those things apart from the, the gym building without needing planning permission. So why shouldn't these people be allowed to build what they find to be appropriate to their property and their tastes? You know, taste is completely irrelevant. Yes, there's the in keeping with the surroundings, but the fact is this house was permitted in the first place, not in keeping with its surroundings. We've reserved the right to make this decision, but any of those neighbours could build most of those structures without needing permission. So I, I, I find it difficult to refuse these people the same the same rights. Thank you. I have a proposer. I haven't got a second here. Your proposal, your proposal your approval, your so recommendation. I'll second that then. Thank you, Mike. We have a second here. Can I ask a question? Yes, you can speak, Joyce. Um, yeah, I'd like to ask a question, direct question. Mike, please. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'd like to ask a direct question uh, to Philip Marvin you. Okay. Is this out of keeping with the site? A direct question. You're asking me my personal opinion now? Yes. With the dwelling, no. With the surrounding area, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I won't you. make it worse Thank if we thought the other bits here. I've got to speak as a client. No, no, I don't know the agents can't speak in the applicants, but there's nobody speaking in, in defence of the application. Uh, we're here to debate it and for you to come to a, a decision. Uh, you've got to take it on board at the end of the day. If this goes to appeal, do you think we can defend it as a council? Okay, we have a. Well, sorry, Gary. Thank you. Uh, just to leave the and Veronica's uh, clarify if the committee is minded to refuse. Do we have to state the grounds of refusing? Yes, of course. And so yeah. therefore, we're allowed to it. Yes. Thank you. Well, we have any further reasons for us, isn't there? Hang on, Vince. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it's, it's the reasoning that should lead to your decision mm -hmm. rather than your decision trying to find the reasoning. So you should work yeah. through your reasons and arrive at the conclusion as a result. Thank you. Okay, we have a proposal in a second. We've all had a good voice on this. Um, I'm not happy about the boundary, but that's besides the point, it's not planning reason. So, could we go for the boat then? Oh, okay. So, you've heard that the proposal is to accept the officer recommendation. Um, are you for or against Councillor Barrow? Abstain. Councillor Birchett? For. Uh, Councillor Clark? Against. Councillor Davenport. Against. 
Councillor Hunt. Reluctantly four, because I can't find the need to refuse. Four. Councillor Isherwood. Four. Councillor Towers. Four. Against. And Councillor Wynne. Four. That's five in favour, three against, and one abstention. Thank you very much. Oh, right, okay. Mind you, don't worry about you. It's going to be off recommendation, isn't it? Item nine, to appeals and appeal decisions. Item now, nine, custom. Now, Appeals, yeah. Yeah, appeals, yeah. Yeah, well, ma'am, your notice is to be dismissed, dismissed and two other terms. Both of them are the. Yeah. It's just the appeals now. Yeah, that's what we would like to go. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much. Cheers, Sorry about that, Philip. Right, sorry about that. Right, two appeals allowed and the two have been uh, uh, dismissed. With regards to the ones that are allowed, um, a little concerned about the one in Nesquip, as uh, it was on the site allocated outside the local plan and isn't included in the revised local plan either. However, the inspector decided that um, it had, didn't have a substantial impact on the uh, visual and landscape, so it was allowed. Uh, we had a similar situation in St Martin's where we thought we would lose it. Yeah, we didn't, we won that one. So it, 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 the inspectors come to the conclusions as they have. And then the other one, uh, which was allowed, um, I have the case officer sitting alongside me, if you'd like to comment, the dwelling in the name of sexual dwelling. You've got nothing to comment on. Right, okay, well, that was dwelling in the open countryside again, uh, where the, the inspector decided that, uh, as you'll see, the appeal decision was attached, uh, was of sexual quality, and so worthy of uh, support. Any questions on the appeals? No? Okay. Well, I can tell you so to exclude the public. No. Thank you. So our doors closed. One second, Dave. Go off live.